thanks for joining me. And uh, we'd always been announcing that we're going to have a special guest in the studio today. And Mama V said you have a repellent. But this is what you need to repel yourself against, all criticisms. Because it is a historic election nonetheless. And if the NDC is retained, it will be the first party since 1993 to have gotten three terms in office. And if the MPP summons all hurdles and wins, it's the second time the Dankwa Busia Dumbo tradition will be in office. But what does the chief scribe of the ruling party think about his party's chances on December 7? An energy crisis, a slump in economic indicators, perception of youth unemployment are some of the key issues critics say may go against the NDC this election year. However, the party is still launching its campaign this Sunday at Cape Coast in the central region. Perhaps to show critics it is well poised to defend its record over the past three and a half years. My guest is Johnson Esiedunketia, General Secretary of the ruling NDC. Well, known to many of us within the media, etc., as General Mosquito. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. All right. It's a delight to have you. And the last time um, I heard your voice was when you addressed uh, a press conference of the party, but specifically again criticizing the MPP, saying that uh, they were more like hypocrites especially yeah. when it comes to your activities at IPAC and what the deliberations would be concerning the elections. Yes, that is uh, uh, what I gleaned from the, their conduct so far. Uh, with regard to preparations towards the November, December elections. Why would you say the, the MPP and its representatives at, at that level of the discussions always behave differently? As if sheep sing wolf skin. Well, I'm just, I was just describing <laughs> what they have been up to. And I uh, produce evidence to show that, indeed, I wasn't framing them up. And it was actually their conduct that I was summarizing. Uh, I would like it was like a testimony I was writing. When you are in school, you write your testimony yourself. The head teacher or whoever it is, just puts it together when you need it and hands it over to you. Um, <coughs> I, that was not the first time of uh, us maybe talking about this type of stance because it doesn't augur well for, for our democracy at all. Our democracy is founded on consensus building basically. Um, from 94 up to date, We've um, always sought to establish the electoral rules through consensus building. Elsewhere, they just send legislation to parliament. Then when parliament enacts them into law, the, the, the elections body comes to implement. But um, learning from our own history, we realize that if a democracy is beginning, and you are not careful, and uh, you don't seek to build consensus, it can easily degenerate into dictatorship. Our own history shows that uh, from the First Republic, the laws that were passed to um, declare one party state and all that <laughs> were all properly passed through a democratically elected parliament. Uh, just because there, there was an overwhelming majority and they could make legislation uh, that has the purpose of entrenching them in power. So because of that history, we felt that uh, if we, all other laws can be passed regularly through parliament, but when it comes to the laws that govern um, elections, uh, it, it is better for us to get consensus. I'm sure if UP uh, was sitting with CPP uh, somewhere else to develop a consensus position, UP would not sign to their own uh, demise, thereby making uh, CPP the only party in Ghana. So that is the reason why we think that consensus building is always very useful. And um, from 94 up to 2000, this has this served us so well. It was through consensus building at IPAC that we were able to um, uh, introduce reforms in our uh, elections process that developed our 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 
system up to a point where we won international acclaim all, all over. But of late, things are beginning to change. And we think that it is not good for us. If you decide something through consensus at IPAC, you come out, you have an obligation to stay true to your decisions and make sure that uh, you, know, you defend those decisions publicly. But we don't see that happening with MPP. But what they the MPP has said critically is the fact that, well, they may have been part and even mm. perhaps even led the discussions for mm. the propositions, but mm. they were not adequately informed and even the process by which they thought the discussions were were not Who the same. informs them? You are part of the process, so you expect whom to inform you. I don't think that is, that is a, a good point. Because when we table an issue, first of all, we invite suggestions from various political parties. But in fact, the, the thing that triggered this press conference was about this electronic transmission of results. So perhaps uh, we can nar uh, narrow the, the narrative to that particular. And put things into perspective. Yes. You see, um, Electoral Commission, after the Supreme Court judgment, decided to uh, invite individuals, institutions, faith-based organizations, political parties to bring suggestions as to uh, how our electoral system ought to be reformed to address the uh, emerging challenges leading to the 2016 elections. So I remember about 30 or so submissions were made and uh, these submissions were put together into a booklet. And IPAC met and constituted a committee to study them and recommend those that are feasible for implementation. So IPAC met and then distilled the suggestions and brought the recommendations, about 27 of them, to the Electoral Commission. And interestingly, the, some of the key points submitted by NPP were, one, that uh, because they believe that Electoral Commission does not, uh, you know, implement IPAC decisions, IPAC is becoming a, a useless talk shop. So they wanted a legislation that will compel all political parties and electoral commission to abide faithfully by the decisions we arrive at at IPAC. That was MP, contained in MPP paper. And then before, uh, after that, they made other suggestions. And relating to the electronic transmission, it was the suggestion of MPP. It's contained in their document that electoral commission should use satellite to transmit polling station results to the national headquarters. So they should consider buying handheld scanners and all that. So I, when this, uh, the committee sat, we took a position against the electronic transmission because if you remember, um, during the 2012 elections, even when we were not doing electronic transmission, we were, just, we were faxing the results from regional centers. MPP held a conf uh, press conference alleging that the Electoral Commission has started some electronic transmission, and then this was done by a company called STX, and they, they will first transmit to their office where there will be equipment there that will pad the results in favor of President Mahama before they are retransmitted to the Electoral Commission. And we said, ah, you yourself have accused the Electoral Commission of doing e-transmission and have come out to indicate that it was possible for somebody to pad the, the, the results before they get to the, the commission. Why is it that you turn around to recommend the same thing for implementation by electoral commission? So we, in, uh, I was representing NDC. I was very, very skeptical. I was the last person to be convinced to go along with this uh, recommendation. So I was wondering why MPP, having suggested such a laudable idea, 
It has gone through all the processes. Uh, experts have now convinced us that it is the way to go. And then we've presented it to Electoral Commission. We've held further discussions with Electoral Commission. Electoral Commission now accepts it in the spirit of your own accusation that, uh, uh, I mean, Electoral Commission is recalcitrant and impervious to suggestions. They say now we are going to implement all the decisions of IPAC. Mm -hmm. Then you turn around, instead of congratulating everybody, you turn around not to even uh, um, criticize the, the e-transmission, but to go forward to suggest that it is unknown to you and that it is being imposed on you by <laughs> somebody. I, I think that that mm. is not a good thing. Well, very interesting uh, mm. nonetheless. And, uh, and you're and going I, I, I think I have the report here. Mm. I can show you their own paper, the MPP. I've seen document. that very report. It was shown to and me by um, one, one, one uh, member of uh, mm. uh, parliament for MPP who came to the studio one well, time. Precisely. That mm. is, that is uh, he's even a member of, of IPAC too, represents the MPP sometimes. But, well. uh, and, and so you're, you're going to launch your campaign formally. And uh, yes, yes. we're not preceding this. Uh, we've had the CDD come out with um, a survey report, which mm. uh, gives a certain perspective of mm. Ghanaians mm. not thinking that we have the right leadership going mm. forward. Mm. Um, that almost like an indictment on, on your party's government. I was expecting CDD to do that. Meaning what? Because NDC officially has severed relations with CDD. The, the relationship between us and CDD is like... Uh, Party in government and party in opposition. So we don't expect CDD to say anything complimentary about us at all. So uh, I don't think I will go to discuss anything coming from CDD. Mm. We made I a public position, approved a neck position about CDD. And it was more than 10 years ago. So since then, we have never dealt with CDD in any way at all. And so. Uh, get into any election, they will come out and say there's something called Afrobarometer report. This is not the first time they've been coming out. There was a time they gave us thirteen percent chance of winning and we won that election. So, so I don't think so we, in should, we should be glorifying C D D or anything. Poo -poo in the report, is that it? Just in quotes. I, I it is not something that I want to consider because it is coming from a clear and uh, you know Clear opponent of NDC, and uh, I don't M think. Mr. Sheldon, doesn't it smack of uh, a party that's in government, um, no. second term, but very much complacent? No, no, thinking no, no, no. That whatever we concerns took, are being expressed by the electorate should not be taken into we consideration. We took that position in 2002. 2002. That was the position we took. Uh, that was when we took a position against CDD. So it's, it's not. We were in opposition at that time. And we took that position against CDD since we come in uh, uh, for the rest of the six years in, gov uh, in opposition. We were still not dealing with CDD. And then we came to power and uh, we are still not dealing with CDD. So we don't glorify anything coming from CDD. And we don't participate in any of their workshops or any of their functions at all. So you didn't even look into the report, did you? I haven't looked at the report at all. You don't even know whether any of your subordinates have? Oh, how would I know? <laughs> mm. <laughs> because because inherent I'm in not sure if anybody is reading CDD report, they will come and take permission right. from the general just, just because you didn't read, let mm -hmm. me just apprise you of a certain content. I'm not interested in it. But it's indicating that at least um, um, your, say, I'm not your, in, the head of, the, the it, head of your, your, your government has, has as as at least about 48% approval rating. I'm saying that I don't want to glorify CDD for anything because officially, we are not dealing with CDD. And you don't deal with the IEA too? We deal with IEA. But on a very partial level? No, we deal with IEA. There is a particular issue they, have, they, 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 they are engaged in which we are not participating. And, and then we are free to do, to do that. I, if you do analysis of your criticism against the IEA, it, it's as if you're saying they're partisan. Are you saying IEA or CDD? IEA. Why? Well, they are organizing a presidential debate. You, no, no, you no. I, as I sit here, I'm the, I'm the chairman of the platform of general secretaries on the IEA platform. We are saying it's not about boycotting IEA about everything. We are saying that the approach towards organizing presidential, this presidential debate has been wrong, and they ought to correct it when we drew their attention. They, they didn't want to correct it. They rather came up in, 
in a language that we considered not to be complementary. So we decided not to engage in that one at all. Because, you see, the IEA program that they are running, it is called uh, Ghana's Political Party Program. Mm. Okay? GPPP. It is funded by the Netherlands Institute for Multiparty Democracy. And uh, the structures of which we run these this, uh, two main structures, we have the caucus of chairmen and we have platform of general secretaries. Okay. So uh, the ruling party would supply the chairman for the caucus of chairmen and then the chairman for the general secretary's platform. And then we have policy analysts and other, other people. So we look at our democracy and see where the deficits are and how to move the whole democracy vehicle forward. So it is essentially a political party pro program. So if we are going to engage in any activity, we discuss it and plan it and deal with all the modalities at these platforms before we come out to announce anything. This time around, they went ahead to announce their own decisions and their own formula as to uh, how it is going to happen. And when we sought to find out, they just uh, snobbishly told us that they were dealing with higher people somewhere. And I don't see how, when you are dealing with political parties, the highest authorities are the level of the, uh, uh, the caucus of uh, chairmen and the platform of general secretaries. You understand? So we said they should go out there and correct that impression. They didn't. And they kept on and on and on. I said, okay, go and deal with the higher authorities and let them organize the, the debate. Because the presidential candidates are presidential candidates of the political parties. It doesn't matter whether our candidate is in government. You are not dealing with him as a president. You are dealing with him as a candidate of NDC. And you cannot snub the party NDC and proceed to deal with our presidential candidate. So does it mean that your presidential candidate is not going to take part in any debate whatsoever once it's IEA? The That's the official position. This IEA debate, no, we are not going to participate. You are not going to change your mind in any way? Well, I can't predict what will happen tomorrow. But so I'm saying that as at now, we haven't changed our So you mind. can change your mind? I'm saying that I'm not going to predict what is happening tomorrow, but at this stage, that is our position. In launching your campaign on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, it, it will be on the back of um, three and a half years up to the point, of course, of the campaign launch. But by close of December, it would have been four years. Yeah. What do you think have been the, I mean, if you do a lot more introspection, the inherent problems that would be at stake, or perhaps um, you will be held onto uh, for perhaps also not achieving uh, when you enter into that very race to be re-elected into power? Well, for every country, there are always emerging issues, OK? <laughs> whether there is government or no government, whether the government does well or <laughs> doesn't do well. Because times change, issues emerge. And for every period, there will be emerging issues. We see issues like um, uh, the current uh, power energy crisis is an issue that we are dealing with. Uh, we see education is always an issue in our elections. We see health as an issue. And above all, we see uh, job creation also as an issue. So um, I guess these are the issues mm. that are going to uh, form the basis of the debate getting to this election, not forgetting, of course, good governance mm. generally. Because in 2008, your, your manifesto was around the theme investing in people, yeah. um, jobs, yes. the youth, etc. Yeah. The same for 2012. Do you think you've achieved any of those indicators? I mean, done well adequately. We've done so well in all those indicators. And um, the purpose of um, um, Sunday's launch will not be so much about our achievements and where we are going to go, uh, go from there. 
we're going to launch the campaign, introduce our candidates, and, and, and then indicate how the campaign will go, the nature of our campaign, and so on. And then, two or three weeks from there, we will now launch our manifesto, as we have always done. We, when, you, when you lump all the activities together, you don't get the space to deal with each of them sufficiently. So um, from 2004, we've always uh, introduced our presidential ticket on a different date. And then we will do our campaign launch, and then we will do uh, our manifesto launch. And we have followed that tradition mm. uh, to date. This time around, we are going to put together the introduction of our presidential ticket together with the campaign launch. And then we will reserve the manifesto launch for another time and another venue. That will be from which time from now? Or from oh, the launch well, of the campaign? We Originally, we, we projected two weeks after the campaign launch. But uh, things have changed a little because we were all uh, heading towards November 7th. So now we have the luxury to, if you are like, add a few more days and plan the campaign, the manifesto launch uh, better. It's likely to be in somewhere in the middle belt, either Kumasi or uh, Sunyane. When? Well, I thought I've just answered that question. No, you I said, said two weeks after campaign. I said that uh, that was the original plan, two weeks after the campaign launch. Because but because we now have another month added uh, to the election calendar, we will have the freedom to uh, you know, extend it and then uh, uh, plan the manifesto. But you don't know when? Properly. We haven't taken a decision. Sure I not. have my ideas as to when it should happen, but I don't decide for NDC uh, single-handedly. You need to move it through the decision-making structures before you can. I, I've been doing some monitoring and some checks. It seems that from 2004, 2008, mm. 2012, the mm. time of your campaign launch seemed to have uh, been a bit late. Or it's still just around the As table. compared to what? The previous years. It, As compared previous, to previous elections. You no, know, when we are in uh, opposition, the situation is different from when we are in government. So, in fact, it is so with the choice of our parliamentary candidate, presidential candidates, and so on. When we are in opposition, we choose our, both our parliamentary and presidential candidates much earlier. But when we are in government, we, we choose them much later because we need to give uh, those in government time to, you know, you know perform their duties as, 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 as officials of government. If you, if you do analysis of what is coming from your party communicators and the MPP, it, se it seems as if there seems, there seems to be this very um, wait and see as to who will launch which campaign first and which manifesto first and which second. No, no. I think it is the creation of the press, essentially. That's what I... Well, yesterday I had the... <laughs> it's the creation of yes, the press. Yesterday God. I had the national youth organizer of mm. the MP, M, M, MPP here, Samuel mm. Oku, mm. and he specifically said they're waiting for you to launch because you seem, as a party, that is their, since 2012... That is their problem. It doesn't speak for us. Uh, I'm to, telling to you. plagiarizing no, no. or perhaps copying them I'm, or I'm, cloning some of their no, policies. No, no, no. This uh, narrative about cloning, plagiarizing, stealing, and so on. I thought that it should be left at uh, lower levels of uh, engagement, not at, the, at our level, because it doesn't add anything to the, <laughs> to the, to the campaigning, and I'm not a fan of uh, that type of narrative. But I'm saying that, uh, I mean, what it is that they are, they are, they are talking about. For instance, when you go to ballot for positions, I'm just giving you one example, ballot for positions on the ballot paper, and you happen to be on top, then suddenly your party will be thinking, Suroho, Suroho, that type of thing. If you are down, you say, Asieho, Asieho. <laughs> Things don't remain the same. If you go for another election and you ballot and you are now down, you, you the same group, will be thinking, Asieho, Asieho. 
I have already seen uh, the MPP people saying, yes, it's some, yes, it's some. <laughs> the way we, we, we did this when in 2008 and so on. So these are matters that should not uh, engage, uh, you know, the, the time and effort of senior people at the level of political party. We so can, you don't, so you we don't can, get... We can leave this type of debate... So you don't get worried, for example, the when the MPP roots. says that um, the NDC usually take a better part of their programs and, no, and then no, tend no. to implement them. It's, it's like they, they talk about the senior do they believe, national health Do insurance. they believe that those things are good for the country? If you are proposing a policy and you think it is good for a country, you should be happy if it is being implemented. Not when it's somebody's <laughs> idea. No. The, whose idea is that? <laughs> Who has a copyright <laughs> to, to what you are, you, are, you are talking about? If it is free education, who in the world has a copyright to free education? It is contained in the national constitution. So that's why I'm saying that we don't waste our time on this type of thing. It's marks of people who are confused, who don't have anything to talk about. They will have sufficient time to be debating uh, these type of things. Uh, my party colleagues are more brighter, are brighter than your party colleagues, and, and th those are things that should be left to the grassroots to debate, not at the level of uh, national. Well, somebody will, somebody will say that perhaps you are. Somebody will say perhaps you are trivializing the issues because I'm not Leonardo Danko Kufado, who I is the flag bearer of the party, don't have was in France the mm -hmm. other day mm -hmm. and was telling um, supporters of the party mm -hmm. that each time they came out with concrete ideas to mm -hmm. implement. Mm -hmm. Um, the NDC tend somehow, while they are in government, tend to implement those ideas, but not implement them well. But that's coming from another than <laughs> So the ideas are not theirs. He's admitting that the ideas he are said not their theirs. their ideas. Said, oh, but the NDC takes those ideas take and even ideas? doesn't implement them well. You see, I, I, I'm trying to avoid this type of narrative, but I even think that that is what we should talk about. Let me, let me give you a little bit of uh, lectures in politics. You have, for every political party, in fact, the political party is a group of people. It's made up of a group of people who have the same ideas or believe in the same uh, ideas as to how society or a country must be governed and they seek to capture power to be able to implement those ideas. Now, there are about three main philosophies that you have uh, which form the basis of uh, politicking. You have those who believe in socialism, you have those who believe in capitalism, you have those of us who believe in social democracy and you have others who believe in communism. You understand? So before you, you, you choose your party philosophy, it comes along with a set of policies that define your party. You understand? So uh, that is why I think that MPP will not benefit uh, when they push this argument at all. Because if you are uh, a capitalist party like MPP claims to be, you don't believe in social interventions at all. You believe that each one for himself, God for us all. Allow everybody to apply their talents and everything and let them succeed and enjoy the fruits of their labor. They believe in property owning democracy and so on. So they don't care about social interventions. Now, when you get to the comrade uh, Kwasi Pratt and Co, who are <laughs> socialists, they believe that everything, uh, you know, factories, everything must be centrally planned and organized by government. You understand? Uh -huh. and so government should be running factories, government should be running all schools, government should be doing everything by government. Government will plan how many people enter the university, so therefore how many uh, uh, job vacancies will be created, so 
Generally, socialist countries don't complain about unemployment at all because everything is planned. And then you have the social democrats who believe that, yes, let everybody apply their talents, use the natural resources available to uh, progress, let them compete. But it is a fact of life that in every competition, some will be winners and others will be losers. So it will not be fair to allow those who are winners to just, uh, you know, go ahead with everything, whilst those who lose cannot afford the basic necessities of life. So let us tax those who are able to make it, and then use the proceeds to cushion those who lose out so they can also afford some decent living. That is social democracy. So it is out of these social democratic principles that you have collective insurance like uh, health insurance, you have uh, uh, you know, free education, and all these things that Nanando claims <laughs> he mentioned them first. So the more, if we, we were interested in this type of debate, we should be telling him that your party says they believe in free enterprise. They believe in establishing private schools and allowing people to enter the schools whose fees their parents can pay. The others can go to hell. That is what your philosophy means. Okay? So we should be happy that any other party will come out and say that they are also concerned about free education. <laughs> you understand? Because it forms the, 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 the basis of our, of, of our belief, our core belief. But on, the contrary, we be but on the contrary, it seems the MPP rather have, uh, they seem to be... So it means that they are rather plagiarizing from the social democratic oh, uh, really? pool of ideas. That is the point. That is it. Because you cannot say, unless they come to declare that, officially they have abandoned their capitalist uh, <laughs> and property owning stance. You understand? So these ideas of... Uh, Social insurance and, uh, uh, you know, uh, free education, free health care, and uh, the other things, they are coming from the pool of ideas of welfare society that is uh, built by social democrats. Oh. So if you pick an idea from there, and you are a capitalist party, you pick an idea from there and want to implement, and you are going around saying that you are the first person to have promised it in Ghana, so it becomes your idea. You don't know what you are talking about. Well, I, I, I get your point <laughs> in many respects. <laughs> and, and is that why the, mm. the whole idea of having a lot more accusations or criticism against your government or borrowing a lot more and investing them in social infrastructure is something you defend uh, succinctly? Yes, because... That is what we believe in. The best economic side is, is not the best way to go. You go and then, then at least they should tell us that uh, they should tell us that our ideas are bad. They shouldn't be saying that when we are implementing our ideas, they, uh, we are copying from them or we are stealing their ideas. If the best economists say those uh, <laughs> laissez-faire economists, those are the theories that MPP uh, founded their party upon. That let everybody. Implement so you believe enterprise. that building the bridges, building the overheads, the airports, the roads, the schools, and uh, just suppose that with what uh, the criticism is that there's no money in the pocket of the ordinary Ghanaian and so affecting how the does, How does money come into the pocket of Ghanaians? <laughs> how does money come into the pocket of Ghanaians if it is not through work? And building bridges, building the hospitals, building, they are not there as just fiscal projects, they are built to achieve an end. You understand? So when people are saying, uh, we don't eat roads, we don't eat hospitals, we don't eat this, we don't eat this, <laughs> I think they, they left the argument halfway. They don't, they don't conclude the argument. Because these are the things that will ensure that you can make money. When? In the, not in the short term, definitely. No, but you see, if... How do you make money? Apart from maybe central bank printing CDs and distributing them to people to put in their pockets. And I'm not sure that is what MPP is talking about. If that is not MPP is talking about, then all money making 
comes out of uh, 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 you know development, development projects and, and things like that. Because look, um, I heard Nanado talking about one factory, one district, one factory, and I asked myself. Uh, is, uh, people say very good initiative. Oh, why not? And I'm saying that I asked myself. It should go a little step, a little bit forward, and then it will expose the hypocrisy. And how would, that, MPP. How, how would that be happening? For instance, if he's able to tell us that those factories are going to be built by government, then it exposes him as abandoning their core beliefs in private enterprise and now shifting to state-run businesses. Then we know, if that is what it's about, then we know. If it is not going to be done by uh, uh, government, then surely he's talking about private enterprise. If it is, uh, the factories are going to spring out uh, on the initiative of private entrepreneurs, clearly government cannot direct them. They respond to the environment there, the infrastructure in a particular area, that will attract the investment. That will assure them that when they put this in here, they can make profit and make returns on their investment. If that is the case, and uh, President Mahama is laying that infrastructure, then in other words, he's laying the foundation for your so-called factories to uh, to be attracted to those places. So you don't, on one hand, criticize somebody who is laying the foundation for the type of investment to happen and say that, well, when I come, I will not lay that uh, infrastructure, and yet I'll make sure the factory springs up. How else is he going to do it if it is not going to be by government fiat? And we know government has established factories in this country which have failed because of the absence of some of these conditions that we are creating. And if it is the case that he's going to, uh, you know, uh, provide conditions that will attract that type of investment, mm. then he should be congratulating the person who is providing that infrastructure. Okay. We have to end the show, <laughs> but before we do that, let's look at one or two other questions. The yeah. Recently, we had the Electoral Commission, yeah. after following the Supreme Court ruling uh, yeah. in that very Abu Ramadan Imako case, deleting a number of names uh, yeah. who had registered. Yeah. But uh, we still could have people who still have registered with National Health Insurance Scheme mm -hmm. cards. Is it not possible? I don't know. Mm. Because I don't keep the <laughs> data for Electoral Commission. And this is uh, uh, the subject of a court ruling. Uh, the court demanded uh, further and better particulars. And those particulars were provided by the commission, and, and the court made orders for their deletion and so on. The MPP, so the MPP if, anybody, if anybody has data that can contradict what the electoral commission uh, brought, I'm sure they should have provided it to the court at that time. The, the campaign you're going to launch, uh, it's going to definitely be in very pronged approaches. Uh, what will be the approaches? I mean the event itself no. or the... You are launching the campaign. Uh -huh. So how is it going to roll out? How our the campaign election? is going to roll out? Mm. If I tell you, you won't come to Cape Coast. No, I'm so we are going to we'll tell you why we are in Cape Coast. <laughs> We are going to tell you the nature of the campaign when we are in Cape Coast because I'm not launching the campaign here. So that is the, the, the things that will attract all of you to come and, and listen to how our campaign will proceed. Mm. But if it is about the program, the program is starting this morning uh, with the uh, worship with the Muslims. The Muslim community today is Friday. And then tomorrow we will worship with uh, the Adventists and all those who worship on Saturday. And then uh, Sunday morning we worship with the, the other groups who worship on Sunday. So after seeking the face of God in all these three ways, then we have the time to go and crown it with the campaign launch in the afternoon of Sunday. All right. I wish you all the best, sir. Thank you very we much. We will be there. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you're not afraid of the MPP, are you?
No, no, no. You don't think that we're going to have a repeat of two terms in government out and then another mm. two terms? No, no, no. You're going to be the first party three terms in? We are going to, we are going to repeat two terms for a presidential candidate. All right. Johnson is here doing Katia, known yes. to many of us as General Mosquito, is uh, yes. the General Secretary of the NDC. And um, we're gr grateful that you've made uh, time to pass through the studio this morning. Thank you. Very much. And uh, please make sure you stay on this very channel because this is where we bring you the best previews of that very campaign launch by the NDC in the uh, central regional capital, Cape Coast. But uh, that's where we will end the show. But as always, please make sure you get interactive. On Facebook, we have Join News on TV. We've linked that very uh, page to our Twitter handle, at Join News on TV. And after each uh, show, we upload each segment on our YouTube channel. And the channel's name is Major Online. That'll be it for the morning.